everybody, welcome to the podcast. It's September 17th, and I want to start off very first saying thank you to all the new subscribers and followers. Holy smokes, guys. I know the race is getting tight and we're busy, but I am I'm so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the new followers. And I just anybody that's new should know um that I absolutely am committed to providing you with the best information I can get for you. I do fact checking as much as I can. And even if I miss it, I try to I, I try not to miss it, but if I do, I try to um pend it on Twitter in particular. Twitter is where kind of a lot of the election stuff is going on. So I'm doing I'm still over there in the hellhole. But uh, I happen to have curated by Twitter really well, so I don't see a lot of garbage. But I want to thank everybody for, for being new to the podcast. It's You can listen to it on audio. At, uh, I have it through Podbean, but you can get it anywhere. And you can also go to YouTube and watch The Lawyer's Daughter there. And now I'm doing video, so you can see my charming face, which is sort of like my charming, tired face. But it's here, and I'm doing video on today today's pod, I'm actually going to show a little bit of video, but it doesn't matter because I know I'm an audio listener to MSNBC. So I know sometimes you need to have stuff um, explained for audio listeners. So not a problem. And then if you're just a reader and you just want to scan my content, you can always just come to the pop, the blog and read the blog. The blog will never have all of my charming anecdotes that come through on the talking part, uh, but that's okay. That might be what you're looking for. And I, and, and I honestly, I can't blame you for that. Anyway, so let's get into today's content. It's day 50. First of all, only 50 more days, guys. 50, five, zero more days. That's not very many days. Second of all, I'm kind of bummed out because the news has been pretty bad. Uh, we've had two women die from complications of miscarriage, which is really the anti-abortion laws that are so pro, pro-life that they're killing women, adult women with children. So they're destroying families, which is, I don't know, if you want to be on the grotesque list of who which crimes are worse i mean i don't know that's just a gross list i don't want any of it i don't want any of these people dying so let's not even do this what how is it worse uh, i don't want to comp uh just compete there we have a ton of stuff going on with weird things that were regulations that were rolled back during trump are now coming out and and having effects so we're seeing that but mostly it's the rhetoric and what's going on in ohio how trump is allowed to prepare Actually, and J.D. Vance, let's just face it, it's the GOP has some sort of inoculation. I don't know what it is, but that inoculation, the vaccines that they're so afraid of, they've been vaccinated against being called out and held accountable. And that drives me nuts. So, so, so with all that in mind, because I just didn't want to look at the news anymore. And I've got, I got trolled so hard by it. I mean, it wasn't trolled. It was a, it was a threat of sexual assault from a guy. It, and the thing is, guys, he actually created a video of, of, vulgarness he took my images that he pulled off this website off my blog and then he chopped in um gross like gross sex stuff and a lot of lesbian stuff which cracked me up because while i am not a lesbian i would have i have no goddamn problem if you call me a lesbian because who cares it doesn't matter to you guys what i'm doing with my genitals as long as it's legal right so i'm not I, I don't that's never an attack vector for me you can call me gay till the cows come home i take that with pride and do appreciate that i use the word pride there in fact i think a pride festival is one of the best places on earth for anyone to go because you know what you don't have to be anybody but yourself at a pride festival and that's maybe the best thing i've ever felt so anywho i am sick of the bleh out there and so what i thought i wanted to show something that i found on the internet that's super cool for nerds like us I didn't say just like me this time because i think you might like it and I called it, I decided to say that this is how to unleash your political beast. And being a rhetorician, you know, a rhetorician that loves to play with words, you know, I had to come up with what beast stands for, right? So that's becoming an empowered activist, supporting transformation. That's a beast. Becoming an empowered activist that supports transformation. You are a beast. Well, aren't we all? So, okay, so here's the deal. You probably have already figured out if you're if you've been here at all for any amount of time, you know, I would have loved to have been a political strategist. That's just how I rolled. I was raised by a lawyer. I was raised in politics. I was trotted out to Democratic Central Committee since I was a little itty bitty person, probably for the adorable factor. Right. That's what I'm going to go with or the precocious factor. Did you just call me precocious? I suppose I was. Oh, well, yes. So is my daughter. So there you go. Anyway. How I didn't become a political strategist is still crazy, but it's mostly because my dad was murdered, right? Because he was the one with the political aspirations and I would have learned how to work the machine. I would have been his 
campaign strategist, along with adults. I mean, I would have grown up in that world and I would be one now. I'm just convinced of it if he had not been murdered. So, because the strategists get to ask questions and argue and y'all know that's just kind of my, that's how, why we have a podcast. Cause I like to ask questions and argue. So I was groomed to be that person. And with my political upbringing, I can't think of anything more important than fighting for our country. Some people wake up and they know they're supposed to be a soldier. And I knew I, I have, I, my daughter says it's a kind of neurodivergence. I have this justice thing in my brain that kicks in all the time. It's as, it's as fast as my ability to calculate the fastest way anywhere. My brain just knows. I don't even ask. I just trust that my brain can do that math. Well, it does the same thing about democracy and justice. If I see something unjust, I just can't stop perseverating, which means just focusing on it. It bugs the crap out of me. I have to actually stop myself. It, it also has to do with being a trauma victim and trauma victims tend to be over empathetic and, and, and tend to be kind of empaths because we've learned to anticipate other people's feelings so we can get caught by them. So yeah, that's part of it. Sure, fine. But the thing is, it is also really cool that we can fight for our democracy and that justice is such an important part of, of who we are. That's like just who we are. So, okay. So campaign strategists use tools like use data all the time they use aggregated data and they can they want to we heard a little bit about on steven's um podcast the other day on polling if you haven't listened to that it's really interesting because he's just talking about polling like normal like how it works when you're in the business and that part is revealing i, I it's very it was very revelatory for me to find out that they spend way less money on polling now just to get headline polls to get soundbite polls versus actual polls that will predict outcomes that comes in October near the end of October because they're so much more expensive so so instead I found something while the polar poll people are off doing their polling thing and we're gonna have Stephen back because there's a lot of polling around abortion that's being misconveyed and he's going to take us through some of this research around abortion I think he'll probably be back next week and so we can get some of that data from him and, and actually what I love is the inside baseball part right what is really happening? inside we would normally call it inside the beltway but we all work remotely now but remember inside the beltway man inside dc you there were i have friends that live inside the beltway they provide me with scoop i don't hear because they hear it at restaurants they hear it at on the train they hear it at work so in some ways Stephen, who i interviewed the other day is kind of one of an inside the beltway kind of person he's in montana now and he's up there working on the tester stuff and we want to get john tester elected so anyway Hey, Jen, get back to the podcast. Okay, so here we are. Sorry, I just like to gossip with you about all this other stuff. So campaign strategists use data to help plan their moves, right? But we have access to some of that data. Now, it's much more aggregated, meaning it's bigger data sets, and it's only parsed down to the county level. But still, that's pretty awesome for us. That's that's a lot of access for people like us and that that's come out of the, the technical, technological uh, evolution, revolution, whatever you want to call it. You know, we had the industrial revolution and we had the technology revolution. So some of the stuff that's come out of technology that I happen to love, I love it as a marketer, but I also love it as an influencer is aggregated data. And aggregated just means it's collected together. So you can't say Bill said, believe me, Steve on polling can tell you what Bill said, but not this kind of data. And, and generally it feels intrusive if you can know what Bill said. Although I do think Stephen can tell us what Bill said. This kind of data, when it's aggregated, tells us what people like us say. So this is not, these are not aggregated around demographics in this case. It's aggregated around geography and it comes from Google Trends. So Google Trends is going to let us become campaign strategists and, and be able to make our grassroots activities better. So I'm going to show you two tracks as we go through this. First, I'm going to show you the site so you can go play with it because my God, it's so fun. And if you are a reader or just an audiophile and listening on audio, all of this is in the blog. So you can find these links and everything. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Google Trends. You just put in Google Trends and what you'll see at Google Trends. And I'm going to start to share now my screen of Google Trends, uh, which is hilarious because I don't know where it is. Uh, it's a, it's my web, my web screen. So let's just go in. I'll just go ahead and flip out of my blog and show you my, uh, let's just share my screen. 
Okay, hang on a second, because I've got it up here. Channel content. Nope, that's all my stuff. Here we go. Google Trends. Yay. Okay. Can you see? I hope you can see that I am sharing Google Trends. God, I hope you can see it. Doesn't I'm not convinced that you can. But if you're in Google Trends, what you see when you first come here, and that's trends.google.com. If you're in Google Trends, what you first see when you come in is you see Explore What the United States is searching for now. And of course, <laughs> sorry to say it's P. Diddy. He's having a bad day. But okay, now when you're in this, you've gone to trends.google.com. Now I want you to scroll down just a tiny bit because there's a section called Dive Deeper. And there it is, U.S. Elections in Search. Go ahead and click on that. Now you're in Trends google.trends.google.com forward slash trends and then you're into a story in this case the story is u.s elections but now let me show you what you can do in here because this is pretty cool as you scroll down you'll see first the candidates in search this past week so these are the these are what's being searched with the name of the candidate that's at least what i've been able to discern and going through, if you explore one of these, like I'm going to click on Donald Trump. He's in 66% of searches compared to Kamala, who's in 34%. Now, again, this is real-time aggregated data. It could change at any minute. So don't say, Jen, but it wasn't this when you looked at it because it's live. That's why. So if you go and explore Donald Trump, what you'll see in terms of the topics, and you can compare him to someone else. That's, you can add in another person. But what is really interesting is when you go in and look at who's talking about Trump, you can see which regions of the country. But I happen to think it's most interesting to see what the related topics are. So related to Donald Trump right now, and these are brand new because they're called breakout. And I want you to notice they have breakout. Let me see what's behind my three dots. Oh, and you can go in and look more and you can go in and learn more about it. You can go in and explore it and see what that's been. Hey, stop it. Now I got to go find the old window. Okay, here we go. And you can go in and explore it. But what I thought was really interesting to me is that you can see Ryan Ruth, the guy who they arrested for having a gun on Trump's property. He, because that's what they did. They arrested him for having a gun on Trump's property. Let's just face it. Everything else is just crap. Um, he's showing as a breakout, not just, he is rising as a topic. So you can toggle this between rising and top. Kamala Harris was the top contender for Donald Trump in the long run, and so was the debate, and so was this assassination thing. Crap. I'm sorry. But now if you look at Rising, it's still about this guy, Ryan Ruth. Uh-oh, Nikki Jam, she's so hot. Poor Nikki Jam went through one of those Trump sex change, only it happened on the way to the stage at his last rally, where he called Nikki Jam hot and sexy, and then Nikki stood up on the stage, and he was, in fact, hot and sexy but probably not Trump's type because he's a man and Trump didn't even know that. So there you go. There's your gender reassignment happened at a Trump rally. Holy crap. We are not talking about that enough because it's not relevant. But my, my point is, and there's good old Laura Loomer. And then we have gunshot because there wasn't one. So the, so this is interesting. Look over here. If you look over here on the on related queries, they actually have the Biden Trump hat. I don't even know what that's and Trump eating dogs. And Biden wearing a Trump hat. These are breaking out right now as rising. Do I want to know why? Does anybody want to know why? All right. So what I'm saying, though, is this is really cool. So you go into Trump and you can see all this stuff. And that is a drill down on Trump. But you can do it for anybody. Kamala, you can put in anybody else here and see what's coming up. But then the next section is called register to vote. But these are actually the states put in a randomly close to the state order, which is kind of cool if you ask me. And you can get a geo map or you can have this state lap. And if I were to click in on California, I can go in and see that there have been 79 searches for Cal in California, but also I can see what are the being searched in California by county. Can you imagine that by county? So if I want to know what my county, Santa Cruz County is thinking about, I can go in and click on that. And Santa Cruz County is teeny, teeny, tiny. So it's hard to reach. But we're having a lot of talk about immigration in this town. Shocking, but true, because half of our residents have migrated here legally. And we have a lot of farm workers here who are working as immigrant workers. So that that's it's a big deal for me because I want to protect my friends. Our immigrants here and the migrants that are here are our friends. We live with them. We don't hate them because we're not assholes. Sorry. 
Anyway, you can go in and look at your county. I think it's really interesting. Like a county like Inyo has crime at 100 right now. Well, first of all, they also are burning alive with bad fires. So I suspect Inyo and San Bernardino County are under huge fires. So it's not surprising to me that things like crime are coming off really high. The one thing I want to point out to you is that Google's done one thing that really disappoints me. They haven't kept a color with the with the item. So in some of these graphics, crime is blue. But in other graphics, graphics, crime is unemployment. So please, that's a really bad design. I used, I studied hierarchical design from the folks at Carnegie Mellon. And I will tell you that that's bad information design. Colors should always be associated with the same data because people are used to color coding. Our brains want to color code. It's actually a really powerful way to use information hierarchy and use color in your graphics. And if you notice companies that do it well, you know you belong in yellow because the things you want to do are in yellow and they're consistent in their yellow. So this is a this is a design flaw in this Google stuff. It's probably because the interns did it and not the um and not a bunch of people from Carnegie Mellon or anybody who has information design. There's probably a poor UX designer somewhere, but God knows they're overworked. They always are. So listen, you can go down and look at the propositions for the state, how um California is learning about issues. So if I wanted to target California in particular. I've got to hear, look, here's how California, There, there's a lot of interest around Trump. I suspect that's negative interest and a bunch of Republicans in Orange County. There's always a bunch of Republicans in Orange County. But I'm not too, too worried about the state because we actually believe in human rights and civil rights. So I think we're going to do okay. But that's, so what I'm encouraging you to do is go in and look at your state and go in and look at your counties. And then I want you to take it all and use it as intelligence, not as super prescriptive, but as insight, because that's your value, right? You're bringing your intelligence to this election. And as a as a, somebody who cares about where we go with our democracy, even if you're not out knocking doors, your intentions to, to support democracy matter. That intention to support Kamala Harris, that matters. I'm not going to get really woo-woo here, but there's a whole other side of me that after I have a few drinks or a few puffs, I'm going to tell you all about how that energy works. But that's not relevant right now because that's definitely woo-woo. It's from the land of fruits and nuts, and it's just something I choose to believe in because optimism delights me. But I'm going to tell you this energy matters, and your intentions matter, and intentions work. So go in there and take a look at your state. And then if you go look down a little bit further, explores how Americans search for key political issues. Again, I want to flag that these, the purple on the left is not the same as the purple on the right. The purple on the left is immigration. The purple on the right is abortion. So that's important. But what you should see, which is very interesting, is for a day or so, immigration and abortion have stayed steady. And what I think is interesting is to watch how these issues go up and down based on the aggregated aggregated conversation we're having in the media. So Monday night's usually a big night on MSNBC because Rachel has a guest and Jen Psaki has a guest. And then Lawrence comes in and tells the media that they're full of shit because they've been totally sleeping on the job. So I know the conversation the next day is likely to be reflected by some of MSNBC content for people that are in that club. You get what I mean? Like it kind of follows. And it usually I'm finding because I I guess I'm ahead, but I would expect me to be ahead because I'm actually um, consciously pursuing this information. But I see I, I've noted it takes about four days for things to kind of uh, fluffle down. That's not a word. Fluffle? Fluffle down? No, trickle down. But I don't want to say trickle down. That's economics. We're going to fluffle down. I'm going to fluffle. I have five cats. We fluffle in this house. I am a cat lady. We're going to fluffle. So it takes about four days for the news to fluffle down. And that's when you start to see the broad um, interaction. Like I, for those of you watching me today, Grace, I know it was you. Um, I was arguing with the troll today, but I was trying some arguments. I want to bring some strategies to online discussions. And I was trying, some, I was doing some tests is what I was doing. I wanted to see how different approaches worked with arguing with an idiot. Now, Mind you, I'm trying to make sure I'm not arguing with an idiot. I argued with one person today who owns a business. And it actually, we actually agreed to disagree, but it was really civil. And I liked it. Like that was satisfying that we both acknowledged, because we did both have a point. We both had a point. And they, they're trying to run a small business in Texas. I don't even know how they're alive. It's an engraving business of all things. 
I want them to be successful. Why would I not want them to be successful? They're perfect candidates for Kamala's $50,000 investment for entrepreneurs if they wanted to expand their business or do something amazing with it. So I'm pro small business, very much so. Uh, but it was interesting to have those conversations. We're going to do that later in the podcast, probably um, in a couple of days, because I really need to test out and do some research on some communication theory. I want to make sure I have the right theories behind what I tell you. So I'm not talking out of my fluffle downness. So this is the website. You can see all of this on this cool, cool website. You can dig in. And that's what I wanted to share with you because the content that I bring up then next is how to use this for your power. So here we are. We've got, I've gotten to the website. Now I'm going to tell you how both the campaign uses this information and how you can use it. Because there's no reason we all can't be little mini con, uh, campaign strategists, at least in terms, I'm going to go back to uh, you as a person have decided what you, how far you can go in this election, right? How far you're willing to put your neck out. And by the way, congratulations to all of you for being willing to put your neck out. It's a pretty ugly world out there. And I live in California, so I'm, I, I can talk like this, but I am not dealing with what you guys are dealing with in other parts of this country. I know that. That's probably why I have the power to be able to do this, because there's not somebody bugging me every day. In fact, a very nice fan full of they turned out Jehovah's Witness pulled up in front of my house today. They got out like um, a clown car. It was kind of hilarious. But when they got out, I go, oh, my God, they're all dressed like uh, they're all dressed very nicely, like middle class nicely. You know what I mean? They were all white um, and they all had I, you have to be of a certain age to know this. But, you know, like the coordinated skirts and the nice tops and the sweater that goes over, you know, like like um, kind of like not like golf club, worse, like, like cards, like card playing ladies, but there were men and late and women in there. So when they got out, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not dressed. Cause that's me. I said, am I living room without my clothes on? And no, I had a shirt on, but I opened the door and I said, hi. And they go, oh, you're probably wondering why we unloaded right in front of your house. And they were really paranoid. And I go, just a little curious what's going on. And they told me who they were. And I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm not interested in the message. Um, but Y'all look really nice. And I said, and you're, we're all clear Trump isn't affiliated with Jesus, right? And I'll be damned if they said, oh, no, we're very clear. They said that. you So there's my stick in my neck out. That was my point. There's always times you can stick your neck out. And they were so lovely because too bad they picked my street. They're, my street, like I've mentioned, I'm in like blue collar zone. There's people home and not home. They were done on my street in 10 minutes. <laughs> My God, I didn't want that to be funny, but it kind of was. Nobody's home. It's Tuesday morning. Nobody was home except for one idiot that they parked in front of. That's me. Okay. So my point is every one of you I know is sticking your neck out to the extent to which it's safe and reasonable in your world and a congratulations. But the big thing behind that is your intention, right? My intention is to get Kamala elected. That's just got to be, and my intention is to protect democracy. If you're clear on those two intentions, then everything else you do will man be manifested by those intentions. And that's the cool part of this. And that's how I come at this too. We Generally, humans are well-intended. And so, and I'm setting my intention hard. So here's what you can do. As you think about your intention, who you are, how a strategist might use this kind of content and how you might use this kind of content. So first of all, you might refine your message based on what's trending. For me today, and this is interesting because I've been doing this a little bit with the podcast, right? Depending on what's in the conversation, I'll just drop a link to work I've already done because I've done a lot of work on some of this stuff, Project 2025, how to, um, how to, how do different things work, how democracy functions, what's the political user experience. I've got a lot of that in the can now, 50 days worth already. So in your case, you would do the same thing. You would see what's trending. And just because you could have a good conversation about dogs today, does not mean today's the day to have the conversation about dogs. It's just not going to get picked up. It's just not in the public zeitgeist, as they say. That's a great word. Zeitgeist is fun to say, even with a Invisalign attachments on your teeth. So you can use the trending issues to help you become relevant. So for the strategists, use these trends to find out what people are really concerned about, right? Healthcare, immigration, the economy, adding traction in specific areas, bringing out use cases, bringing out citations, that sort of thing. A citation of here's what happened before, or here's where it's changing, or here's what's not your expectations. 
You can use that on, on trending issues. We can use it too to just make sure what we drop or what we respond to is part of that public zeitgeist at the time. So you're going to get less attention over something random than you're going to get over something that's relevant at the moment. If you enjoy being relevant at the moment, some of you don't. I certainly didn't appreciate that nasty gram that I got, but eh, it didn't hurt me and whatever. He's an ex-cop. Why am I worried, right? <laughs> Anywho, this is how you can use the trends to help you know what the trending issues are. It might make you really interesting at lunch. It's hard to know, but you can just drop facts. And I have some in here because this week, I, I just, this week regulations kind of took a turn with the boar's head incident. And then SpaceX is suing regulators because they were called out for their bad behavior. And then of course, there's the consequences of Trump's rolling back a hundred environmental rules. So, you know, Regulations, for some reason, are out there. I think it, the Texas explosion, the boar's head, all these things have have made us look at regulations. And it's the it's probably the biggest thing to Project 2025 is coming for. And you can tell because Trump says it all the time. He always talks about regulations being in the way and preventing business, 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 business. This data can also help you target geographical hotspots. So, of course, for a strategist and a campaign, they'd know exactly what parts of the country they need to go to. But guess what? As a grassroots person, especially as we talk about mobilizing the vote and getting out and starting to help people get to the polls, get them registered, get them the things they need to be able to participate in democracy, knowing where to go, where the geographical hotspots are, is the way to, is how you can uh, move people. Like, I keep an eye Grace keeps an eye on John Tester and the woman in Nevada, who I can't remember. Jackie Rosen, is that her name? Uh, I know she's keeping an eye on this. But I keep an eye on Shamari figures because this is a new district. And I care about that. You might be, I keep an eye on John Tester too, because, and Sherrod Brown, and there's a couple others. And I got to get Josh Holly out of here. Pick a few, pick a few folks that you keep an eye on. I think that's a really good use of your energy and just kind of look in on them and care and feed them and make sure they're getting views and make sure they're getting awareness. That's something you can do. It's also something you could talk about if you're in one of those districts or one of those states. So yeah, set an intention for your down ballot folks and target the geographical hotspots. You want to know where to knock doors? Confirm with your campaign, but this will let you see why. If the campaign tells you where to go somewhere, you can go into that Google Trends map and look at why and what's trending there. So you can actually know how to have the conversation. Although I really want you to make sure the conversation is authentic for you because it has to come from your, your heart has to come from a place inside that cares deeply. That's what really moves people. And we'll talk about that when we talk about uh, how to influence later in another podcast when I just go make sure I validate the theories. But for sure, we know when you care about something and it's connected to you, that ethos, your ethos comes through. Your, your authenticity and your trueness comes through. They're going to optimize their digital ad campaigns. This is kind of fun. As a, as a home viewer, you can see if the ads in your area are being reflected in Google Trends or if it's the opposite way. It could be that the ads actually make Google Trends change. Remember, causation is always harder to arrive at, but you could see that correlation between advertising and how these things go up. So if you have personal stories that you can share that make that, that activate, I, I talk about this in marketing all the time. It's one thing to have content. The key is to be able to activate your content, right? Like I've published all of this content, but if I can't drop it in where it's relevant, it it just lives in freaking internet ether, except for you guys. I love you guys. You guys are sharing too. But what I'm saying is that, you know, you've got to activate your content. So even the little things you do think, make sure it's engaged with, make sure you're doing something to make it engage worthy. That's how you can use this, the trends to help you make it more engage, I was going to say engageable, more engaging. I think that the word, I think we've actually solved the problem with that word and it's, it's less, not more engaging. All right. You can monitor competitor interest. So who's out there that's into oppo research, you know, oppo opposition. There's a lot of good people who like oppo besides Stephen Miller and, and uh, Roger Johnson. They love the oppo, but oppo doesn't have to be bad. You can go see what Trump people are drinking today. You can go look at the messages that they're consuming today. And that's your competitor interest right there. You can also see where they lean in on Kamala. So there you go, both sides. You can go use that as oppo research and help you refocus your efforts on the things that are going to move the needle. And again, don't try to convince the cult members. They're not going to be convinced. I don't know how to get through that brain of theirs, but I'm writing them off. 
I'm just writing them off because they don't want to listen, which is like what we used to say about our kids, right? They don't want to listen. Does anybody ever really want to listen? Oh, you are. You want to listen. That's great. All right. So my point is be an oppo. Do some oppo research if you're into that. Assess the effectiveness of campaign events. So if if a strategist goes in and can see those maps popping where rallies are happening, that's great. For us is you can go see if you are helping your neighbors understand some of the topics that are popping right now, sharing information about upcoming events, sharing information about why this is relevant right now. That is probably, I think being a message translator is probably one of our greatest superpowers as grassroots players, because we can take what seems um, seems kind of theoretical and like an idea that's out there and we can bring it down to real level. I had people today calling me a liar about the women who died from the botched miscarriage and abortions this weekend. They told, called me a liar and I'm like, what, what, what? I don't even know how to respond to that. I'm like, lie, you're calling me a liar? Like, what are you, five? I said, here's the articles. But I said, it's not my responsibility to educate you, but it is my responsibility to suggest that you need to look into this more you clearly are not reading all the information, and that's why I'm not going to try to convert cult members. So you can access, you can identify emerging issues, which we've already uh, talked about. But it's it's always always cool to see what's breaking before it's breaking. It's cool to be like there's a bunch of us. This is so funny because I I didn't I guess I just took it for granted and didn't realize it. But if you'd have to have been on Twitter, I think it's Twitter mostly, and maybe some of the other. Um, uh, I was going to say Trumpy, Trumpy properties, maybe Truth Social, maybe over on some of the other uh, Rumble and Gab or whatever they use over there, maybe on the right wing properties. But because Elon's taken Twitter so dark, luckily we see stuff breaking. So we saw the people on Twitter saw the news breaking about this stupid pet eating right at when it was happening. Right at the beginning, we saw that trash start. So when Trump said they're eating the dogs which is now unfortunately an audio meme that's now an earworm for all of us. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. Uh, most people didn't know what the hell they were. he was talking about because they, they don't consume the information like we do. So if you're one of those people that likes to know about emerging issues, there you go. You can find it also on trending. Probably not as well as on Twitter. <laughs> Elon does his fair share of creating his own nonsense. Don't get me started. You can also use it for testing messaging relevance. So let's say a campaign put out a message. So this happens all the time. And and frankly, prior to Kamala coming on the scene, I got to say the GOP had this part down. I felt like every morning the GOP, regardless of whether they are elected already or they were a candidate, they get talking points every morning. So the way that machine works, they get their talking points. Now it's fallen apart. That's some of their problem. They don't even, I don't think they know what to talk about. They want to talk about the, the continuing resolution and making and adding garbage to the, our paying our bills that have nothing to do with running the country right now. They want to make it illegal for immigrants to vote, but it is. They have to be citizens to vote so that you don't need to add that to the bill. And they also want the bill to expire in six months because they expect Trump to win and they want to begin the Project 2025 decimation of our federal budget. So they're falling apart. But message, testing message relevance is one of the ways they know they're falling apart because none of their messages are sticking right now. They're, they're just stuck. All they have right now that's really sticking is racism, which is shocking, right? It's shocking. Okay. But activists can test message relevance too. You're going to do it a little different. But if you see that you're aligned with what's trending and your messages are true and well-intentioned, you should have some uptick in your post, not on Twitter, because if you're a Democrat, you can't get any uptick on Twitter. But in general, you should do pretty well, especially if you're operating in face to face with people. That's that's really cool. And you can say, hey, look, look, what's look what they just tried to do and it didn't work. And then, of course, the thing I care about the most um, is grassroots mobilization. And they share this data, the campaigns, campaign strategists will share this data with their their campaign teams. That's one of the things I love about it. It's very cool. Um, so if you're part of a campaign, if you're a data head, and I know you're out there, there's some of you that are, this stuff, it's super fun. It's super fun to look at this data and feel like what you're doing is making a difference. It's like you guys following me. I mean, like that was so validating. I can't even tell you. I sit here in my stupid, junky little tiny office that needs to be cleaned by not me. Um, no, it needs to be cleaned by me, but 
I can pretend, can't I? My intention is to have someone else clean it. There you go. There's my magical thinking. But the idea is that you are, you're out there and we've got to mobilize these folks and your intentions are good. And so the next step is mobilizing grassroots people. And that's all of us. That's everybody making sure people are registered, making sure their registration's still good, making sure they can get to the polls. I don't care. I'm If I lived where they, it was legal to give water, you know I'd be giving water because I want that on my arrest record. She gave water to the thirsty. Me and, me and the divine is what I would say about that one. So this is our chance. And this tool is really fun. And I wanted to do something fun because it hasn't been very fun in a couple of days. And they warned us. We were warned. We were warned that this was going to be hard. We were warned that they would come for us. We were warned that we would have to fight and fight and fight and that there would be days that would be ugly and difficult. We were warned. So my job, I can, I took this on as my job is to remind us not to get too down about it. In fact, when I got down and I had a, I've had a, I've had a very rough couple of days here. I've had technology problems. I can't even tell you. I've had so many nonsense things go wrong. And, and I, I had a lawsuit that has now crumbled. That was a really important lawsuit that just, I just talked to the lawyers today. So I've had a, like a number of, um, I know sad things happen in a row but you know what so be it this is how it rolls in america and we know we dust ourselves off we pick ourselves up yeah this is my no justice no peace and this is exactly what i wore for my victim's impact statement and i still feel the same way we're all in this together i care about everybody having human rights civil rights and i care about all of us working hard to get kamala elected and i'm really happy to have you here and i hope this little fun podcast gets you interested in the issues in a completely different way. And I will be back tomorrow with something, but I'm not sure yet what it's going to be. I've got to go look at those Google trends. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Make sure you subscribe and rate, and I'll be back with another episode really soon.